Chapter 31 The Fire That Unleashed the Dick That Fucked Some Shit Up Brad wanted to bitch about his non-interview with Dorian King, but Lorraine was only interested in where Dorian and Justine had disappeared to. Richard went through a cascade of emotions. Snitches get stitches, and Brad might as well have tattled on the teacher when he explained that Dorian and Justine had gone downstairs to cancel the rally. After realizing that yesterday's letter must have been an official notice of cancellation, Richard finally understood that every assumption he ever had about Dorian King had been wrong. Even with the rally mere hours from starting, Dorian King wanted Nicholas Green and his goons kicked off the Vector Defense campus. And with this fresh clarity on the enigmatic CEO, Richard also gained new clarity on his own boss, Lorraine Dillon. Her obsession with that stupid letter had been telling. She was trying to keep Dorian from canceling the rally which meant she had some kind of vested interest in Nicholas Green. Everyone had thought Green was manipulating his childhood friendship with Dorian, but was it possible that Lorraine was using that widespread, albeit totally false, assumption as a smokescreen to hide her own manipulations? And then there was that Ginsu knife in Lorraine's office. After chewing out Brad for his escalating belligerence over the non-interview, her comment about him being a testosterone-riddled piece of fuckmeat was hurled with such cutting accuracy that Richard could feel his non-existent testicles retract into his pelvis. Richard and Lorraine took the elevator down to the lobby. He tried to avoid looking at her, afraid that one look at her cold, calculating demeanor would validate every bit of Richard's mounting dread. There was something very wrong about Lorraine Dillon. She thumbed her phone, and a live feed started playing of Nicholas Green speaking to the crowd of Second Amendment fanatics. The gunshots sounded like little pops coming from her phone. Dory Dum Dum wants to evict us. He wants to kick us out for having the guts to stand up for what we believe is right. But, I don't know. I think you all might have something to say about that. The elevator doors opened, and Richard stepped off before he could see Lorraine's scowl. He hurried to the front security desk while Lorraine strolled at a casual pace behind him. What was she thinking? Justine and Dorian were in serious trouble. Even if Lorraine was behind all of this, surely she wouldn't put anyone's lives in danger. Where was her goddamn sense of urgency? The lobby was quiet, but the few people that peppered the floor were all whispering about the same thing. Something awful was happening outside. Richard skidded to a stop at the security desk. He saw that the narrow-faced, unfamiliar guard from this morning was leaning back in his chair, watching Green on a live stream on one monitor while the security camera feeds of the surface lot, roundabout, and the front of the administration building spread out across the other monitors. Even through the front of the building, Richard could hear the gunshots from outside. Because, of course, there were gunshots. Brad had already called it. The obsessive Second Amendment enthusiasts had traveled by car just to carry their firearms over state lines. Even with tight security, why on earth would anyone assume that there wouldn't be firearms at a de facto Second Amendment rally? And that security guard Richard had never seen before? the same one who had let Richard into the building without a single identification verification, he just sat there, watching the monitors and sipping a fucking big gulp. The peppering of gunshots came first. The surging crowd came next. Richard watched Nicholas Green on the live stream, grinning something smug and petulant, his arms spread wide. The shot zoomed out to reveal the mass of frothing red hats 
pushing forward and surging around the stage. Security cameras showed two figures running from the stage and into the roundabout. Richard's gaze dropped from the monitors to the bank of doors in front of them. In the distance, he saw Justine and Dorian. Dozens and then hundreds of red hats swarmed around the stage, chasing after them. These assholes wanted blood. Richard started tapping the glass of the security desk. They're not going to make it. You got to do something. Lorraine came up beside Richard, and the guard glanced over his shoulder at her. Neither of them seemed at all concerned. Richard's fist slammed into the glass. The few people in the lobby turned and looked, but he didn't care. He glared at Lorraine. We have to do something! God damn it, we're a fucking military defense contractor and we're about to be overrun by a violent mob! Don't just stand there! Lorraine let out an annoyed sigh. She held up her phone and pressed a button, speaking into it while fixing a withering gaze on Richard. A tone played on the other end of the call. Activate emergency lockdown protocols, Lorraine said. Authorization Dylan Delta Omicron 19. The lights in the lobby dimmed before they began pulsing red. Metal shutters slid down over the glass windows and doors, blocking Richard's view of Justine and Dorian as they raced for the entrance. Y you're locking them out? Richard panicked. Lorraine swiped her badge and stepped into the enclosed security desk. You're the one who said to do something. Richard ran around the desk and up to the front window, looking between the shutter bars. The surging red hats looked like a tsunami of destruction, poised to crash down on Justine and Dorian. Should I open one of the doors? The security guard asked. Richard heard Lorraine's response, but couldn't believe it. Let's wait and see if they get closer. With gunshots popping off and a muted klaxon wailing overhead, Richard pressed his hands against the glass, willing Justine and Dorian to run faster. There was no other way around it. Even when Justine and Dorian cut a straight line through the green space, dodging around that massive missile in the park center, the roundabout in front of the administration building was simply too damn big to outrun the rioting horde. The beady-eyed security guard who had insisted on driving them to the campaign bus had conveniently disappeared, although Justine suspected he would have been useless against the surging Second Amendment fanatics. Justine slowed her pace to match Dorian as he huffed behind her. She realized she wasn't even slightly winded, wondering if she should thank her daily spinning class or that massive member swinging between her legs for the unexpected stamina. A series of gunshots exploded behind them, ringing out over the screaming of the mob. Justine and Dorian ducked their heads as they ran, but the shots were wide, or maybe they were just fired into the sky, and Justine focused on the building ahead the interior of the admin building went red, and security shutters slammed into place. Dorian wheezed beside her, and Justine risked a glance over her shoulder. They weren't going to make it. That voiceless whisper shouted in Justine's skull as clarity washed over her. Dorian had to get inside. If the mob got to him, if they killed him, he would die the villain everyone thought he was. He would die as the man who invited Nicholas Green onto the Vector Defense campus. The man who supported states' rights to weapons of mass destruction. The man who would do anything to exert the ultimate influence over Washington, D.C. Dorian King would die the villain Lorraine Dillon actually was. The voiceless whisper kept screaming, and the monster cock bulged, twisting underneath Justine's skirt. Her pace slowed. 
Dorian looked at her, confused and gasping for breath. She needed to buy him time to get inside. She needed to hold off the mob. Keep going, Justine snapped. Dorian stopped alongside her as the mob raced closer. He spoke only one word, and with a rioting mob of Second Amendment assholes bearing down on them, that one word was everything Justine ever needed to know about the man. Yes, he was deeply misunderstood. Enigmatic. Mysterious. But Dorian King was a good man who cared both about her and his work very deeply. Justine. Run! The monster cock slid out from underneath the hem of her skirt in plain view of Dorian. His eyes betrayed no shock or surprise at the growing, gorged member, and instead he dropped his head in a single nod before continuing his jog to the administration building. The monster cock snaked up, coiling around Justine's body, turning to face the oncoming mob. Justine felt the supernatural power of Richard's mutant penis pulsing up from her crotch, tingling out across her extremities. She felt like she was right on the edge of an orgasm. The monster cock head swelled in size, pivoting to face the oncoming horde. The voiceless whisper went silent. All right, Justine said, turning with the cockhead. Let's fuck some shit up. Inside the building, Richard pounded his fist against the window, shouting uselessly. Justine, what are you doing? Lorraine leaned closer to the monitors, ignoring Richard's incessant whining. What the hell is she doing? He yelled at her. An excellent question indeed, Lorraine thought, studying the security feed that displayed a wide angle of Justine standing at the edge of the green space as Dorian continued racing for the barricaded front door. Lorraine! Richard squealed. You have to do something! She ignored him. It was easy to do. Richard was a man, and the only attention she ever paid to men was purely manufactured. It was easier to simply ignore the whole gender wholesale. After all, what good were they? Case in point, all they ever did was fuck things up with their useless, stupid dicks. And if they couldn't physically fuck things with their literal cocks, they found metaphorical ways to fuck things with their metaphorical cocks. Because there was nothing more important to any given male human specimen than his tiny, insignificant, stupid, little penis. And Lorraine Dillon had learned long ago that the best way to shut up any man was to separate him from his precious little penis. Although she didn't have the luxury of castrating every man her path crossed, her ability to tune out their insufferable rambling was matched only by her Ginsu-based castration skills. Lorraine leaned closer to the monitor as the mob encircled Justine. As quickly as the rioters descended on Dorian's unassuming executive assistant, bodies began flying. Like rag dolls, the rioters were flung aside, smashing into each other and creating a scene of unspeakable chaos. At the center of the chaos was Justine, and whipping around her at a speed faster than the security camera's frame rate could capture was... something. Lorraine was entranced. She leaned closer, trying to make out the details of the mysterious attack, but was rewarded with little more than the heat of the monitor. Someone started pounding on the metal security shutters outside the front entrance. Let him in! Let him in now! Richard shouted, scrambling for the door Dorian was banging against. 
Lorraine's hand-picked guard sipped from his big gulp. Um, what you want to do, boss? Like all the other men in her life, Lorraine ignored him. She was transfixed on whatever Justine was doing to the rioters, holding them back with that thing that had dropped from the bathroom ceiling. Yes, Dorian canceling the rally was a significant problem. Lorraine had spent years crafting this plan, carefully moving intricate pieces into place. She had leveraged Dorian King's childhood relationships, convinced Nicholas Green to run for office, manipulated Vector Defense's political contributions, and isolated Dorian in a silo that allowed Lorraine to seize more and more control over Vector Defense's operations. Lorraine Dillon had invested so much into what she saw as the ultimate, long-term castration of the fundamental core of American ideology. And Dorian King had fucked it all up. Yeah, boss, the guard asked again. Lorraine waved a dismissive hand in the air. Yeah, let him in. The guard pressed a button, and the security shutter over the door slid up, the electronic door lock clanking loudly. Richard pushed the door open, pulling Dorian King into the lobby as the rioting mob began to surge around Justine. Yes, the canceled rally was a problem. Yes, the fact that Dorian King was still breathing right now was also an issue. But as Lorraine stared at the chaos Justine was wreaking over the security feed, a warm and happy tingle in Lorraine's gut told her that a solution was staring her in the face. And Lorraine Dillon had learned long ago to trust that warm, happy tingle.